Hey everyone out there, this is the 3DJ channel. My name is Jay and today's video is all about cosplay and 3D printing. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Um, to start off, we probably saw on the thumbnail for this video, you saw this guy right here. And you probably guessed by now, it is the Sub-Zero face mask. Now, I'm going to be going through three different costumes that I'm going to be making uh, I'm making videos on possibly because um, actually no one of them's like I said I'll get into that in a second but one of them has 3D printed and one doesn't but one of the videos I may be making for the other one you gotta find out in a little bit in this video but let's start off with this one um, originally I was thinking about actually donning or putting on making this costume the Sub-Zero costume for myself but Thinking about it, I thought, you know what, I want to make a really cool costume, and I want it to look the best it can, and I'm going to be asking my friend, who's probably watching this video right now, I'm going to ask him to wear this costume, because what I'm going to do is look really, really cool, and the reason, another reason why I didn't want to wear it myself was, Sub-Zero is an average size guy, I'm not, I'm only 5'2", so I'm less than average height, so... I wanted to, to make it look really, really cool. I wanted to have someone wear this costume and have it look really, really cool for you guys, my watchers, my subscribers. You can probably guess by now I'm asking subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, but the um, cool thing about this mask is what I can do with it. But before I get into what I'm going to do with it and what I'm going to do with the costume, let's go into actually how I printed, 3D printed this mask. Now... I went on Thingiverse and I asked for a Sub-Zero mask because I had, I mean, I just saw a video on YouTube about someone who had a Sub-Zero mask and I was like, it was made from cardboard and I was like, I could have a 3D printer. I probably can make that. And I had this really cool filament that I had, which was I, was, I had for a um, lightsaber project I'm going to be working on. I, I put it off to the side, which I'll come back to in a later video, but what I was going to, what it has in the actual lightsaber is a crystal blue, a blue crystal. And, it's, and I, what I wanted to do was put an LED in it so the crystal would glow and you'd see the actual light come out of the light, bottom of the lightsaber and it would look really, really cool. But I thought to myself, this would look really, really good. It looks like ice almost because of this filament that has this, it has this transparency to it. And the cool thing that you saw in the picture of on this um, video is that if you put light behind it, it actually glows through the filament and it will look really, really cool. But... I'm, I'm going ahead of myself here. I want to first go into the printing of this. So, this print right here took 16 hours to print. 16 hours of the machine working hard and getting things, getting to print beautifully. Now, first off, I printed this at a very low speed. I didn't want the actual, um, uh, how do I put this? I don't want the printer to go too fast because I want every detail to come out. I wanted this, this nice cubing look to come out nice and clean and I wouldn't have to worry about any issues with any string. Now another thing I added, I did bef um, before I actually started printing, I did maintenance on my printer. I made sure everything was lubed, I made sure my oiler was maintained, and I just began printing. Now I'll tell you right now, I mentioned in my last video, the oiler is a big thing when it comes to stringing and I thank God that I have an oiler because there's hardly any cleanup on this guy. There's a little cleanup on the top here and a little bit uh, a little bit down here on the middle section, tiny tiny bit here because that's where the support was to start creating this nose piece right here and then of course there's the maintenance on the bottom here where the main uh, support was to actually have to sit flat on the, the actual bed. but. Not a lot of cleaning was done on this. Maybe 20 minutes of cleaning just to make smooth things out and clean it up and make it look really cool. So I'm really happy with this. But the one thing I would recommend you guys as you're doing this, make sure you check on your print. Make sure it's 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 going to come out pretty good. Make sure you keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing's happening to the print that you don't want. Because such being such a long print, if you have to reprint, you want to do it right away. You don't want to do you want to do it sooner than later. So keep an eye on that. So this came, like I said, this came out really, really good. So now let's go into what I'm going to do with this 3D printed guy right here. What I plan on doing for my, my friend's costume, which I said I'm going to make it for him, 
is I'm going to, of course, make this so this actually illuminates from behind. Like you have illumination where you have LEDs in here and this whole mass is going to glow. Now I'm going to put some black paint or backing on this so the actual light will only go forward, not so much back. But I will leave some sections below the eyes so the light will glow up into his face so it will actually illuminate his face blue making the actual effect even all, make it look even greater so he'll be wearing this like this and the blue will come up as you can see in the picture I did I get the thumbnail there's some bluing going on in my face because the flashlight went through the, the, the actual um, the actual mask and glowed blue on my face that with a couple of crazy contact lenses that look like ice or maybe some blue on ice um, contact lenses will make it look even crazier for the person wearing this costume. So that was is one of my ideas as part of the costume. As well as some 3D printed parts for the, the chest armor that Sub-Zero wears and everything. It looks look really, really cool to have that glowing when this is glowing. And then also, I'm going to create a LED orb because in the gameplay you see him throwing an orb of ice at someone and it, they turn to ice after the, this glowing orb hits them. So I'm going to create an actual LED, the same filament as this, LED ball that I'll turn on and you will it'll glow so bright you will only see blue light coming um, emitting from someone's hand or the person who's wearing holding the ball's hand. That's going to be cool. So keep an eye out for that in future videos. So. Um, like I said, I'm also going to link this uh, mask that I have printed. So anybody out there who wants to print their own mask, I'm going to link the link below to Thingiverse where I got it from. I want to do a shout out to the person who created this print, which is Alex LaFarlo. Um, they did a really good job in creating this this uh, file so you can print it out any way, any way you want. And uh, that's my first costume I'm talking about today, which is 3D printed, which is this guy right here, the main, the pest of his don'ts. But um, let's go into some other costumes real quick. Two costumes I'm also working on for myself. Now, you're wondering, why well, am I going to go into those costumes? Well, one, of course, like I said, is has the 3D prints. So we're going to go into that one first. Um, um, let's go into that one, which is... This costume consists of two different sections. A software section and a hardware section. The software section consists of the clothing part of the costume. And the hardware part of the costume happens to be weaponry armor and a special piece that I'm making. The special piece and the armor are going to be 3D printed. But let me go into what this costume is. It is my Wasteland Zombie Hunter costume or cosplay or Comic-Con costume. But first let's go into software. The software is going to be the clothing. The clothing I'm making, I have, is going to be the pants, shirt, belt, socks, generic clothing. Just worn out clothing I've collected and I'm going to use for the costume. The next two pieces of clothing are the boots and the jacket. The boots um, are, a, uh, how do I put this, a um, variation of a video I saw on Zed Not Alpha's channel, which happens to be his YouTuber. Um, Zed Not, if you're watching or you see my video, if you want me to maybe link that video that I'm talking about for the boots, so the stomper boots that I saw on your video, saw on your channel, to my video. I will definitely do that. I'm not going to link anyone's video unless they mention it to me um, to, to link it to their video or comment or send me an email. But um, Zed Not Alpha, I'm definitely going to do a shout out to a couple different people. Not only Zed Not Alpha, but also a lot of people who have inspired me to create these cosplays, also inspired me to create my own channel. So um, I'll be mentioning those guys soon enough in my video right now. Um, but I'm going to create my own variation on the stomper boots that Zed not created, and I'm going to put, I'm going to have those as my boots for, as part of my costume. The next piece of clothing I'm going to have is my jacket, which is a homage to a couple of characters from different gaming and movies: Assassin's Creed, Mad Max, Punisher, and of course Walking Dead. These different um, characters have given me the idea, and I've. One of the reasons how I've come up with this idea for my uh, waste my wasteland zombie hunter costume is I put in my I've made a mindset I create a mindset for myself that I'm this person I'm trying to survive in a zombie wasteland and what am I going to need to survive 
of course, is you got to remember a lot of things you need, a lot of supplies you need aren't going to be readily available. So, and a lot of these things you're going to have to carry with you as you move from place to place. So, what I've decided to do is I made this jacket according to that, keeping that idea in my mind. So, or keeping that where I am and who I am as part of my costume. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the jacket have the internal sec, the internal, the in the inlining is going to be um, literally a military blanket. So I can not only wear the jacket and keep myself warm, I can also use it as a blanket, I mean as a blanket period, when I'm sleeping in this wasteland of zombies. So I can keep myself warm and stuff like that. And the outer section is going to be a uh, leather patchwork that I've created. It's going to look really cool, have a nice, uh, how do I put this, a sci-fi effect to it. Have it. I'm going to have, like I said, the Assassin's Creed is going to be like the hood that I'm wearing. And then the, uh, the uh, what do I put this, the uh, tails are going to be kind of tails to the actual coat. It's going to be like a long trench coat. So like I said, it'll be long enough to cover me and everything. And that's going to be cool. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be the software. The hardware is going to be the, um, where I put this, it's going to be the, like I said, the hardware is the guns, the armor, and the special piece I'm making. Now, the guns, <clears throat> let's get into that. Let's go first into the guns. Like I said, I have the guns already, or the weaponry. But um, what I'm going to do is, the guns I have are four different guns. One's a primary, two are secondary, and one is a, uh, I call it the pest resistance, the uh, Widowmaker, as I put it too. Um, the main gun is going to be, have, has an air, all my guns are airsoft, and they all have been modified to look really, really cool for cosplay. I've also made sure that I 3D print orange tips for each of the guns so I can cosplay safely. Not going to go too crazy into how to be safe with cosplay, but if you guys out there want to be safe, make sure your guns, they can look cool, and make sure that they are safe as well so others will not take them to be real guns and you possibly getting yourself injured because of that. But um, uh, my first main gun is a Colt Python 357. Looks really, really cool as my main uh, primary on my thigh. And it has, uh, like I said, it looks really, really cool. I actually had, a, I modified it, added a gunshot uh, laser sight with a flashlight to it so it's got a and it looks like a hand cannon from destiny which is really really cool and it looks really really cool and I had a man I had a manufacturer or create my own holster because it would not fit in a standard Colt Python holster anymore because of what I added on to it um, just to let you guys know to start off any fabric fabrication I'm doing or talking about if you guys want to see that on this channel or want to see how I created those pieces, which if you want to see them, period, I will show them to you. Just make comment below so I can know what you guys want and I can put that out there so you guys can see that. Especially the holster. The holster came out really, really good. It's an awesome piece and it looks really good with the gun. And I will show you that if you guys want to see it. So leave comments below. Um, the next gun, two pair, my secondaries are two 1911s, which I again customized. What I did is I did add again, added a laser sight flashlight combo to each one of these 1911s. But what I also did was a little bit of metal alteration, not fabrication, alteration. I bought the pieces. The um, I had added um, new grips to 1911s, and also I added a suppressor to the end of the barrel which are made, both made of aluminum and what I did was I had to alter them to allow them to fit on the two guns and they came out really really good and those are the guns again I will show them if you ask um, I also went I didn't go the cheap route I went the easy route I bought um, holsters underarm holsters for both those guns for part of the pro for, for the actual costume and what I did is I actually altered the holsters to allow those guns to fit because they would not fit with what I had put on them or what I had added to them so I altered those holsters and they fit under my arms so they're really really cool so you won't see them unless I open my jacket up in the end but that looks it's a really cool look it'll look really awesome then I have my like I said 
my um, noise maker on my pest resistance is the what uh, it is a airsoft Mad Max sawed off shotgun double barrel. It looks really, really cool, and it's gonna. I mean, it's. I made a holster for that to go on my back. And of course, the last piece of weaponry, which every person should have as part of a zombie apocalypse costume, is I have a sword. Now, I'll tell you right now, in Zombie Apocalypse, you want to have a sword. As I learned from Zombie Go Boom channel, um, a sword is the best weapon you can have when it comes to the Zombie Apocalypse. It is a quiet killer. It allows you to take out as many zombies as you want, and it does not take bullets. And, like I said, I watch Zombie Go Boom, and it teaches me a lot about zombie survival, and what works and what doesn't. But, um, shout out to them. Um, but, in the end, like I said, I have this, this sword, and of course my sword, it's a mock sword, I actually have, I took, it's actually was, it's, it is a real sword, but the idea is I took the fake, the real blade out, and I put in a uh, fake blade into it, so I have that mounted off my back as well. So, that's just the weaponry and the clothes. Now, for the two pieces, being the armor and the special piece I'm making. The armor is going to be a face mask I'm going to design. I haven't designed it yet and it's going to be 3D printed. So that's going to be another video. So I have a face, I have a, I have a respirator slash mask I'm going to be wearing as part of my um, my Wasteland Zombie Hunter costume. And then the final piece, which is going to be a cool piece. I saw a video a while back on tested a tested YouTube channel that was being it was a it was a video on how to make an animatronic skull or how to make an animatronic skull we can control with servos and stuff like that it was it was a, a it was a tutorial done by Frankie Belito on tested uh, tested channel and what I did is I'm going to create my own zombie head slash upper torso animatronic puppet from my back where I'll be holding him and the idea is I'll be controlling him with my hand to the animatronics so he's sitting there making movement and stuff like that over my shoulder either trying to bite me or bite people that are walking past it's going to add a whole new level to the costume which I can't wait to do. I'm going to 3D print, I'm going to be probably 3D printing the skull and the torso part and then I'll be adding everything else I need to make and of course I'll be 3D printing the servo mounts and stuff like that which I'll then link when I start creating that part of my costume in my videos that I'll be making for the actual production of that piece. But um, that's going to be really cool. It's going to be the coolest part of my uh, of my uh, my wasteland zombie hunter pro costume. But uh, that's it when it comes to 3D printing. Now this third costume I'm going to talk about has no 3D printed parts. Or maybe I'll try to figure out what I could do to make it partially 3D printed. I'll see if I can add anything like little little parts here, little parts there that may be 3D printed. But it's primarily all me buying pieces to make. Except maybe, like I said, and, I'll, and of course, what it is is the costume of my favorite character from a samurai movie. I started watching this when I was in college. It is the only subtitled movie I will watch with subtitles, period. It's the only movie I'll watch with subtitles. It is the Blind Swordsman Master Ichi Zayatachi costume. Okay? Now, as you can see right now, I have actually cut my facial hair to match what his facial hair looks like in the movie because I could so I could do so I'm like almost like a couple poses to see how close I get to the actual Zayatachi face and I'll tell you right now when I'm squinting and everything like that I look pretty close really good I can I'm gonna pull this off I'm pulling this this costume off easily and of course I have to get um, a sword oh I'm gonna have to get a sword I'll make one I'll make a sword that's gonna have a straight it's gonna be look like a straight uh, walking stick for the actual costume and have it bang around and they'll have like a fake blade that comes out and everything like that and it's gonna look nice it's gonna look cool for the costume but a lot of this costume is mainly clothing which again like I said I'll show you guys if I'm, I'm probably gonna have to make 
The, if you see them, if you know the character, he has he has arm guards made of cloth, and he has leg guards made of cloth. And that part, I'm probably gonna make. I'm probably gonna try to get some screenshots of what it looks of the of those pieces look like, so I can make them and out of um out of material or even out of pillowcases or sheets. Because I mean, I really want to make it look really cool, and I'm gonna do that. And I'm also gonna have to buy a kimono. And I'm about to buy the uh, belt and everything and the pants that he has. But the one thing I'm the reason I'm mentioning this on this video is I'm also gonna I already purchased this. I purchased the loincloth for this costume because I want to be it complete. Because you do see a partial of his loin, you do see a little bit of his loincloth in some of the um, of the video in the movie. So the idea is I'm gonna have a loincloth. Now, the reason I'm mentioning because I am going to say to you guys right now, right here, if you want to see me in the loincloth, it's going to take you guys, it's going to take you guys supporting this channel to see me in a loincloth. I need at least a thousand subscribers and ten thousand likes on this video alone to wear that loincloth in a future video. So if you guys do that, I will wear the loincloth and you will see me in a loincloth and you will see me trying to be Satachi for my future video so that's a, that's that is literally a challenge to you guys out there to do that for me all right so please by all means like favorite this video and please subscribe to my channel so you can see me in a loincloth I know a lot of you guys out there say I don't want to see you in a loincloth it's gonna be funny if you see me in a loincloth so think about that so but uh, before I go and I, 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 I sign off I want to say you guys out there, I apologize. Last week I mentioned that I was going to try to load another video, but there was an issue with the, the, the video. It got corrupted on my computer, so it got all messed up, so I lost it. So I'm going to have to reshoot the video. But um, I will be reshooting that if I can. I will try to load it this week. But going forward, like guys, please like, favorite, subscribe to my channel. You want to see me in a loincloth, it's going to take you guys a lot to do it, but you can do it. But uh, again, like, favorite, subscribe, share my videos. Uh, soon I will have a Facebook page, so you guys can email me, on, uh, comment me on that, and I will link that as soon as I get that up and going. And I'm still trying to, like I said, I'm still trying to load some of my uh, ideas that I've designed onto Thingiverse, and I'll have that loaded soon. So uh, I'll see you guys soon in a future video, and uh, take care, and bye.